Deuteronomy 34. Come to the end of Moses' life. Since Exodus to Deuteronomy. He's been through so much. And Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto the mountain of Nebo. You know how many times this guy went up and down mountains? We're going to see his age in a minute. To the top of Pisgah. And that is over against Jericho. They're on the other side of the Jordan River, not in the Promised Land. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead unto Dan, all of Naphtali, and all the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, and all the land of Judah unto the utmost sea, that is the Mediterranean Sea. Moses is on the other side of the Jordan River where Jericho is, and God gives him the eyes to see all the way to the Mediterranean Sea. He gives him eyes to see him all the way down by the, by the Dead Sea. He gives him eyes to see all the way up north to Dan. That's on my sight. And the south, in the plain of the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees. Jericho is called the city of palm trees. And Zoar. Let's go to Genesis 19.22 for Zoar. I don't know if you connected that name with a special event in the Bible. But Genesis 19.22 to show that we're and now he's looking to the Dead Sea. That's an eyesight. I don't know. When I go see the eye doctor and I get down about line 6 or 7 or 8, my eyes are like, uh-uh. And I would assume with God and Moses that Moses was seen as, as bright as that big E is on top of the eye chart. In 1922, hasty, escape thither, for I cannot do anything. Till thou be till thou become hither. Therefore the name of the city was Zoar. And what happened is Lot's coming out of uh, Sodom. As he's coming out of, out of Sodom, he said, Hey, can I go to this city? It's a little city, that's what it means. Zoar means little city. I can't make it to the mountains. Well, wait a minute, Lot. We got a man that is where is his age? Where's his age? I know Seven. we look. Seven. A hundred and twenty years old, and you're younger than that. You can't make that mountain, and Moses does. So, with the Zohar, let's see where we are. We are down by the Dead Sea, where Sodom and Gomorrah and her cities are. That's some eyesight. And the Lord said unto him, This is the land. Which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, saying, I will give it unto thy seed. I have caused thee to see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not go over thither. You can see it, but you're not going in. You say, well, come on, God, why not? Because he sinned. And... As much as important as friendship face to face that God had with Moses, Moses cannot go in the land because you cannot go to God one day. Well, my son, he's nice. You know, I just let him in. My daughter, my mom, my dad, my wife, my husband, my grand. Why don't you just let them in, Lord? Weren't they good? Moses was good. And yet his sin displeased God. And God says, nope, can't do it. And this was set the standard all the way to the end of time in the world and everything. God is not going to let you in the land. God is not going to let you in heaven on good intentions. Moses disobeyed the word of God. And Moses doesn't get to get it, go in. It's that plain and simple. If God would let Moses in, then he's going to let everybody into heaven. Regardless of what he says. And he's not going to do that. So the Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab. According to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley. Did you see that? God buried him. That's interesting. 
God got a shovel. God said, whole earth, open up, whatever God did. And he buries Moses. No one goes up with Moses in the mountain. And he buried him in the valley of the land of Moab over against Beth Peor. Oh, you remember that name, Peor? The God that, that hindered the children of Israel by, um, uh, what's his name? Balak? But, uh, but no man knows his scepter, scepter unto this day. Moses, like Jesus, was put into a scepter. Get that. Now the scepter is empty. Let's see Jude 9. God buried Moses, and then something happens in Jude 9. This is a weird circumstance of going on with Moses. A prophet likened unto Moses. A prophet that was put into a sepulcher. And he's there no longer today. Like Jesus. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending, that's the first and last time that word shows up, with the devil... <laughs> You realize that Jesus' grave, the Bible says there were two angels there that visited Mary. It says there were at least two men outside that, that cave, guarding that cave. And here we have in Moab, in a mountain, Pisgah, over by Beth Peor, a god of the Moabites which we've already seen, sex and death worship. We have Michael the Archangel, the Angel of Israel, according to Daniel. And we have Satan showing up. And Michael and, and, and the, the devil, Satan, gets into an argument. What is this argument about? Disputed about the body of Moses. That's kind of interesting. Here's the, the subject of the body of the man Moses. You got God, Michael, and Satan. They're all having an argument at the sepulcher. Makes you wonder what Satan tried to do at the sepulcher of Jesus' tomb. Hey, guards, why don't you just pop it open right now? Go ahead. I'll protect you. Dispute about the body of Moses does not bring against him really accusation. Michael. Oh, I'm going to go into hell with a water gun. I'm going to get old smutty face. I've heard preachers say that. When it comes to the dealing of Michael, the archangel, and Satan, he said, the Lord rebuked thee. Jesus, when he contends with the devil, he throws scripture back at Satan after Satan throws scripture. They're having a scriptural Bible warfare on the mount. And that body is not there today and Satan pops up and says, hey, wait a minute, you can't take that body. That's not Jesus. That body's dead. It belongs in that grave. And Michael says, hey, there's only one thing I'm going to say to you, Lucifer, Satan, the Lord rebuked thee. I'm taking that body up because that body is going to show up later on. How do you know that? Well, who are the two men that show up with Jesus? Moses and Elijah, right? Well, did Elijah get buried? No, he went with the, with the chariots and the horse of fire. These two men are going to show up in the tribulation period. There are three men in the Old Testament that are not in graves. Enoch. Moses and Elijah and then when you go even further look at verse 14 of Jude and Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied so even Enoch is said to be saying something as Moses so when we go back to Deuteronomy there is a weird scene going at this and there's no one here witnessing it 
when Jude writes what he writes in verse 9, he is definitely writing by the Holy Spirit. He sure wasn't there. <laughs> and God wanted you to know before the last book of the Bible what happened to this body. Now you, you want to know something? Is not Moses a lawgiver? Is he not highly esteemed among the Jews? Go ask any Jew today that is not saved, has not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, has only Old Testament, and ask him in 2018, what happened to the body of Moses? Well, it was buried in uh, Visca. All right, who buried him? Maybe someone will get it right. Maybe someone will think, well, what happened after God buried him? Well, he's still there. Where's his bones? Only in the New Testament, by the Holy Spirit, by the, the fact that Jesus Christ is the Messiah who suffered and died according to scriptures, was buried and rose again the, the third day according to the scriptures, that we have the word of God by the Holy Spirit. We know what happened to the bones of Moses. You cannot go back and say, oh, we've, if, everybody, if anybody ever said we found the bones of Moses, they're lying. Because they're not there. And he, God, buried him in the valley in the land of Moab, over against Beth Beor. But no man knoweth of his sepulcher unto this day, because it's not that he's not there. Like Jesus. So there's a type of Jesus Christ. And Moses was 120 years old. And look, he's still climbing a mountain on his death mountain, you know, death bed. When he died, his eyes were not dim. Oh, not if God can show him all the land of Israel. Nor his natural force abated. Yeah, he's climbing that mountain. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days, a whole month, Jewish month. So the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. Time to move on. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid, laid his hands upon him. And the children of Israel hearkened unto him, and did as the Lord commanded Moses. And there arose not a prophet since Israel, like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. And when you're talking about Jesus, you are talking about God's face. Jesus is the face of God. Prophet like unto Moses, and all the signs and the wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and all his servants, and to do all his land, and to all his land, and all the mighty hand, and all the great terror which Moses showed in the sight of all Israel. Look how good Moses is. See, good, great, great, all the things, everything that God told him to do. But there's one time God told him by the word of God, and Moses didn't do it, and you don't get to go in the promised land. So you cannot come up to God and say, God, I read your Bible. Yeah, so? So many people. God, I prayed. Yeah, so, so, did, so did Cornelius. He prayed. God, I gave money. So did Cornelius. And when I sent my angel, he obeyed and went and got Peter. And when Peter preached the gospel, he believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. I am not going to let you into heaven because you were good. If I did not let my servant Moses, who did everything I told him to do, except one thing. And I did not let him in that promised land. Don't think that you're going to do everything except believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I'll let you in. Absolutely not. That's what you see with Moses. Moses comes to the end of his life, 120 years old. And one afternoon when he did something that God told him not to do, you don't get to go in the land. That's a very important statement at the close of Deuteronomy. The law is not going to get you in, and disobedience to the word of God is not going to get you in. Today, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And it's just as simple as Moses speak to that rock. You can do flip, be, you do whatever you want. If it's not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are not getting in. 
that simple. 